Hi, this is Tina from Haiku. Today we'll be taking a close look at actions. We'll review the two different types of actions available in Haiku and what each of them is for. If you're just getting started with Haiku, this tutorial is for you. Let's start by talking about the purpose of this feature. Actions are used to listen to certain events, which we'll cover in a moment, and then to trigger, like its name suggests, an action. If you've read our blog post designing the real thing with Haiku actions, which I will link in the description box, then you probably know there are a lot of things you can achieve with this feature, including traveling through time by changing the timeline position, responding to user input, and changing properties of app elements like position and color. There are two types of actions in Haiku, frame actions and element actions. Let's start with frame actions. Frame actions are, like its name suggests, actions that you can tie to a specific frame. Meaning that you can tell Haiku that when it, the animation gets to a certain point in time, an action must be triggered. You can set a frame action by hovering over a frame or a millisecond in the timeline gotch and clicking on the plus icon that appears. As you can see, a model with the title Frame N Actions is displayed. To set up your frame action, you can either manually type in the JavaScript you need or you can use any of the quick access snippets that Haiku offers by simply clicking on the plus button here. Let's go one by one and explain what each of these is for. Change state and change state transition. These two allow you to change a predefined state to a new value. To learn more about states and how to use them, please check out the dedicated blog post I will link in the description box. Go to and play. With this snippet, you can tell Haiku to jump to a different frame and play the animation from that frame on. Go to and stop. With this, you can have the animation jump to another frame as well, but this time the animation will stop playing once it reaches the desired frame. Pause simply pauses the animation. Stop. It stops the animation. Open link. You can make Haiku redirect the user to a set URL. This is especially useful when embedding your Haiku in a web app or site. Remember, all of these actions will be triggered when the animation reaches a certain frame or millisecond, since we're talking about frame actions. Once you're happy with the setup, you can go ahead and click done. You will see that on top of the frame number in the timeline gotch, there is a blue lightning icon. This signals that you have a frame action in place, and you can click that icon to edit the frame action you've created. Great, now to element actions. Again, as the name suggests, these are actions that can be tied to an element. May that element be the stage itself, or a slice you've instantiated on stage, like the one I have here. You can add an element action in three ways. By selecting the element and clicking on the lightning icon up top. By right-clicking the element and selecting this option here to edit the element's actions. Or by clicking on the small lightning icon below the element's name in the timeline. As you can see, the first thing we need to do to set up an element action is to choose which type of event we want Haiku to listen to in order to trigger the action. We have events like hover, unhover, mouse click, double click, and so on. Keep in mind that Haiku will track these events on the element that we've tied to the action only. We're going to select one to continue. The same as before, we can see a modal appear. This time the title reflects the element's name and the type of event we've selected before. Again, you can simply type in the JavaScript you need or you can use any of the snippets Haiku provides, which are the same ones we had in the frame actions model, as you can see here. In this case, any action will be triggered once the event we set up before occurs. For example, if you selected a click event, the action will occur after the user clicks on the element containing the element action. When we're happy with the setup, we can click done to finish. Great! We've covered what actions are for and we talked about the difference between frame actions and element actions. A quick recap. These two are different and serve different purposes. Frame actions come in handy when you want something to happen at a certain point in time. 
For example, you want to pause the animation when it reaches frame 30. Element actions are good when you want something to happen when the user interacts with that element. For example, you want the animation to resume or to go to and play when the user clicks on a button or slice. It's also important to note that these two types of actions can be combined, as you can see in this example. I'll leave the link to the forkable project in case you want to take a look. From the combination between the two, and especially if you throw in a couple more ingredients into the mix, like states and expressions, there is almost no end to the possibilities of animations and interactions you can create with Haiku. If you want to learn more about actions, please check out the other tutorials we have on our Learn page. I'll leave the link down below, and I'll include some specific tutorials as well. And that's it! If you liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified whenever we upload a new video. Also, if you have any ideas for tutorials you'd like to see, please shoot us a line or two to our Slack community or to contact at haiku.ai. I'll leave both links in the description box. I'll see you next time!